E. Jean Carroll is with us now, along with her attorney, Roberta Kaplan. Ladies, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Miss Carroll, first, just your reaction to hearing this verdict and being in the courtroom. I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed with joy and happiness and delight for the women in this country. As you well know, the jury found Mr. Trump liable for battery, specifically sexual abuse, but not rape. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that verdict? I'm going to let my attorney answer that question because she understands what was on the jury checklist. Yeah, what do you think? So New York law in this area is complicated. I'm not going to take the time to, to your listeners to try to explain it. But suffice it to say that he was found liable of a very serious charge. And sexual abuse under New York law is very serious, and the jury found that that's what he did. It, Mr. Takapina, Mr. Trump's lawyer, said that in one sense he was gratified. He said this is a rape case, it's always been a rape case, and the jury did not find him, Mr. Trump, liable for rape. He did find him liable for sexual abuse and battery. And he this found the him same for sexual abuse, law. and this was a defamation case. It started as a defamation case, and the jury found that Donald Trump lied. The damages awarded here were $5 million. You didn't ask for a particular number. Were you surprised when you heard the jury come back with that figure? I didn't, I didn't even hear the money. This is not about the money. This is about getting my name back. And that's what we accomplished. Robbie had to tell me later how much the damages were. Do you think the jury was send, sending a message with that figure, $5 million in damages, including punitive? There's no question they were sending a message, combined with the fact that they decided the case in two and a half hours, which is lightning speed. By the way, do you think yeah, that you'll be able to collect those damages against the former president? Oh, I promise you that we will collect those damages against the former president. Let's talk about Mr. Trump. He said after the verdict, and he was still posting after midnight, that he has absolutely no idea who you are and called the verdict a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time and that you were funded by Democratic donors. What is your response okay. to that? Here's the thing. Here is the astonishing thing about this win yesterday. Of all the cases that this man faces, all the legal quagmires, it was one well, let's think of all the prosecutors, all the special counsel, all the investigators. And what happened yesterday is one five foot two little blonde, wily female attorney, and one 79 year old five advice. Foot nine year old. Yeah. Five, five foot nine. Five, five foot nine, <laughs> 79 year old advice columnist beat Donald Trump in court. Do you think his decision not to testify helped your case? Do you think the deposition that he gave helped your case? There's no question that both of those things helped our case. The jury saw on our side 11 witnesses who took the stand day after day, including E. Jean, for more than two days, under oath and told the truth. On the other hand, he didn't even bother to show up. And in his deposition, he made admissions where he was basically a witness against himself. Explain that. What, in what way do you feel that he incriminated himself. So I think most importantly, when I asked him about the Access Hollywood video at the deposition at Mar-a-Lago, he answered, believe it or not, that unfortunately or fortunately, men have been, been able to get away with abusing women for millions of years. Fortunately. Who uses the word fortunately to talk about sexual assault? What does it mean to you, Ms. Carroll, to have gone through this process, to have experienced what you alleged in court you experienced all those years ago and to have this day come well it is um, it is a moment which before yesterday uh, there was a concept of the perfect victim perfect the perfect victim always screams always reports to the police always makes note when it happened and then her life is supposed the perfect victim's life is supposed to fold up and she's never sort of supposed to be happy again and yesterday we demolished that old concept it is gone it is gone and i'm <laughs> i'm overwhelmed with happiness for the women of the country it's really not about me so much it's about every woman as mentioned, Mr. Trump never set foot in that courtroom. You never got to see him face to face oh, and confront him. What would you have wanted to say? What would you want to say to him now? I said it to Joe Takapina yesterday. Uh, he came over to congratulate me and he put out his hand and I said, he did it and you know it. And then we shook hands and I passed by. So I got my chance to uh, say it. 
finally you've said that this was about getting your name back, right. getting your life back. That's right. Do you feel <laughs> that you have? In one fell swoop, I think Robbie Kaplan and the amazing team accomplished that. And Ms. Kaplan, of course, the, the president's lawyers are vowing to appeal. Do you feel confident about where this case is and how you'll do on appeal? I've rarely felt more confident <laughs> about an appeal than I do about this one. They have no legitimate arguments for appeal. Well, ladies, thank you very much for your time.